I'm Jennifer Lear. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, um, the founder of Weconcile, which is a mobile app to help couples improve their relationships uh, and couples and individuals, actually. Um, I write a lot of articles on relational issues. I do a lot of video content. And um, my mission really is to help make uh, relational help effective, effective and affordable relationship help available to anyone who needs it because the uh, really, most relationship help is out of uh, the price range for a lot of people. So I'm going to share my screen and hopefully that will go smoothly. <laughs> and uh, let's see, yes, it went fairly smoothly here. Um, so let me get that there. So um, I wanna thank Jacqueline uh, for inviting me to do this and, um, and everyone who showed up, thank you for showing up in us. Uh, giving me, giving some time to this. Um, so I, what did I see in my practice and how do we learn to have a relationship? Uh, I was um, working with a lot of couples and they were really struggling. They didn't have the resources to have long enough. Many of them have long enough or frequent, frequent enough sessions. They um, didn't understand simple concepts like some, I can't speak simple concepts like I statements, vulnerability, emotional safety, co-regulation, self-regulation. And um, I just thought, started thinking about how could I get couples more help? How could they get more resources? And one of the things to be um, to be aware of is that when you ch are changing your whole way of being, it does you can't so you can do a workshop and th you'll get changes. They won't stick unless they're reinforced. And that's the limitation of which books and workshops are great, but they need reinforcement. And therapy is great. You have to be able to afford it and find a good therapist and have the time for it. So I briefly am going to just tell a little story about Jessica, Carrie, and Matthew here in the slides. Um, Jessica and Matthew have a highly reactive relationship. Matthew isn't skilled at understanding his feelings, and Jessica's very disappointed in him. Matthew just wants to get away from her unhappiness, and he tends to withdraw, which activates Jessica, and she begins to cry or yell. And they're really caught in a pattern they don't know how to break. Meanwhile, their daughter, Carrie, is stuck in the stress of their relationship, and she's not doing that well. Her school reports that she, she is withdrawn, and she cries a lot. So that's sort of the, um, just an example couple of what can happen. Now, how do we have, a, how do we learn to have a relationship? We learn through osmosis in our families of origin. We often, um, most of us weren't educated in relate, relating and all of us have some areas where we're strong and some areas where we are weak. Uh, we probably know people who need relationship help. We may have had relationship help ourselves. I did. and. Um, it was, you know, really what I've learned about relationships, my, how I relate has completely changed over the course of my life. So what is the impact of a lack of relational help and skill? And you can see a lot of uh, statistics here on this slide. Um, it's, there's widespread acknowledgement that relationship problems are a primary source of an individual's mental and behavioral health problems. One third of Americans say they can't afford therapy. Children, um, it, children, uh, high levels of conflict and animosity in, between parents pay, places children at a greater risk of developing emotional, social, and behavioral problems, as well as difficulties with concentration and educational achievement. Domestic violence, every nine seconds in the US, a woman is assaulted or beaten. Uh, around the world, one in three women have been beaten, coerced into sex, or otherwise abused during their lifetime, most often by a member of their own family. Domestic violence is a leading cause of injury to women more than car accidents, muggings, and rapes combined. So you have a sense of, you know, domestic violence is the extreme end of relational dysfunction, but it fits into that um, category. Men who witnessed their children's domestic violence are twice as likely to abuse their own wives than sons of non-violent parents. Divorce and separation are associated with increased anxiety and depression and increased risk of alcohol abuse. Intergenerational trauma um, 
is what happens when adverse experiences are passed down generationally. And then there's the divorce statistics. Um, you know, there's the famous statistic, half of all marriages end in divorce. And it's somewhere around there. I think it might be a little lower than that now, but that's first marriages. Second and third marriages are much higher. So that's sort of the, um, what happens to the world when we don't know how to relate. How many people need relationship help? Well, <clears throat> first COVID has shifted relationship help to the forefront of our awareness. <clears throat> and nearly 50% of uh, one study, 50% uh, of a thousand couples they sampled said they attended some form of counseling with their spouse. So the online therapy market is predicted to be 4.4 billion in 2025. So the, the number of people needing help is enormous. Uh, so I, <clears throat> I had a practice, um, I'm not practicing right now because all my energy is going into uh, Weakensile. And I was doing a lot of research, a lot of advanced training, and I began to develop a system to help couples. I specifically studied, I studied a number of modalities. I specifically studied emotionally focused therapy for couples because statistically it is the um, most successful, has the most success rate uh, compared to the next leading couples therapy. Now, <clears throat> the, so um, I'm going to use an analogy. When you're working on your relationship, you don't want to rearrange the furniture in the room. You want to rebuild the room. And that is um, different than just, you know, surface fixing. So when you are uh, working with couples or when you're in a system that is helping you, there's specific things that have to happen. Um, you have to understand your attachment responses. So what, and this connects to when you were a kid, when you're a kid, when you were upset, did your parent comfort you? Which parent comfort you, comforted you? Which parent did you go to? Was any parent rejecting? All of that impacts how we are wired and how we relate. And so the couple actually needs to learn some basic stuff about attachment. They need to learn the behavioral cycle they're caught in and what's underlying that behavioral cycle, what uh, attachment needs and feelings are activated. They need to access these feelings and understandings so they can begin to understand their problem in terms of the attachment, um, the negative cycle, the underlying feelings and the attachment needs. Once they do that, they can then start to integrate um, this knowledge into how they relate and uh, continue um, developing, consolidating. So because of how the content is written and the exercises are, create, are set up, the, this process happens, which makes um, the We Can Sell app therapeutic. Okay, so We Can Sell helps create connection. And what are the capacities that a couple needs to develop to be successful? Well, first of all, they need to be educated. They need to practice. A therapist called this enactments, but practicing. They need to know that the learning is iterative, so it, you have to. It's a back and forth process. They need to increase their um, awareness. What they need to be doing needs to be sustainable. So uh, a one session uh, every two years is not going to be sustainable. Um, so what we what we can sell helps is they help. Uh, it helps couples find their vulnerability, tolerate frustration, reach towards their partners even when they're disappointed access and regulate emotions, listen and be curious, self-soothe and other soothe, connect emotionally and create emotional safety. Many couples do not have these capacities and abilities developed. And if you think of a couple fighting, it's like the emotions are the wild horse, the cognitive mind is the, uh, the rider trying to, you know, lead or uh, guide the horse. But it, when you're emotionally upset, the wild horse is uh, taking taking off and you do not have control. So this is what the app looks, the We Can Sell app looks like. And there's um, different parts of this app that I'm, I'll just talk about for a little bit. Um, the journal, there's been a lot of research on how journaling helps uh, people process emotions, process feelings, develop a witness, create space between what's ha happening or what happened and um, the witnessing self. 
the I need help button on the um, top right of the first screenshot is we're changing to I'm upset. So as a result of usability testing, we learned that they people thought I need help meant that they could call 911 from there or do other things that uh, the app isn't designed to do. So we're changing that to I'm upset. And um, I'm not going to talk about the accomplishments right now. We're doing some changes based on the recent usability testing we did. The main learning uh, is in the library. And if you look on the right screenshot, you'll see what we call a content cluster. And so each uh, content cluster, this is emotional safety. Emotional safety is their foundation. And that's what the, the couple would be learning about. And there are short little nuggets. There's stories that help them understand how other couples are dealing with this. There's lessons, there's exercises, there's some meditations in some of them. The exercises are where the couple will begin to understand and discover and analyze about themselves and about their partner, where they're, they're gonna have to look at and do some deep diving into what's going on. And all of this is discussable. So when you do an exercise and then you hit discuss, um, the it goes, it goes, well, I'll show you where it goes next. And you are able to start cognitive discussions low conflict cognitive discussions about what you're learning. And this will build into vulnerable communication over time as they continue through the content. The quiz, uh, which is on the lower right on the bottom menu, is optional in the onboarding and optional at any point actually. But the quiz is where they self uh, reflect on what they think their problem is, uh, where what they want, where they're struggling. Is it conflict? Is it communication? Is it sexuality? Is it vulnerability? Is it emotional regulation? And it helps us guide them. Um, right now, uh, we will eventually make this guidance uh, better. Right now, we tell them where to go as opposed to being able to line up where they having like AI line up the topics for them. And although we have a lineup, a basic lineup, but we would like to have more ability to make it, um, to not have to say go here, but it actually shows up. So we're working, that's something we're working on. Today is just um, what we recommend for them right now. So I'm gonna go to We Island, um, which is the next uh, set of screens. And that's the middle slide. And We Island will be where they can find what they're gonna discuss. They can look at the, um, I actually need to talk a little bit more about um, really quick about I'm upset. So I'm upset takes the user into a place where they get calmed down, they answer questions, they read things, um, because when you're in a emotionally volatile state, you cannot learn and you cannot communicate and you have to get regulated and grounded first. So when they are in the I'm upset module, they are walked through a, a series of calming things and also, um, uh, they have choices on what they're going to look at, but then they are asked questions and it takes them to an optional communication module where the, we help them communicate. And we do that with thought helpers, which is what you see on the left, but it's, they're very specific um, to, to that situation. That's just a generic thought helper on the left. And so on the right, you'll see an example of a letter that they might have, uh, that they have created in the I'm upset and they can send that or save it um, if they don't want to send it. Okay, so back to here. So in We Island, um, that was the let's talk middle screen. Now love notes. So one of the things that happens in relationships is people lose their perspective. They're in a big fight and they feel like, you know, how am I going to get through this? They lose hope. And um, love notes is a place where they can go in. And again, we have a lot of thought helpers and they can send their partner thank yous, most helpfuls, appreciations, and the partner will be able to read that and go, oh, even though we're fighting right now, yesterday or the day before, my partner said all this great stuff about me, and it helps them have perspective of the bigger picture. So you're not just caught in the moment. You're like, oh, I'm in a relationship with someone who does love me and does care about me. We're just in a conflict right now. And not all couples have that ability. It's sort of like object constancy when you're a baby and you need to hold on to learn how to have object constancy. So now we're going to go to, um, I think my time is going okay. <laughs> um, we're going to go to um, 
sorry, um, Jacqueline, I put in more slides than I was supposed to. Anyway, <laughs> so um, what we're trying to do is get relationship help for people who cannot afford therapy or are remote, they don't have access, they want to grow, they want to improve their relationships, their family life, their sense of happiness. And when we were doing usability testing, some of the couples said that even these are couples, some of these couples had had a lot of therapy because um, we were testing with some people we knew and other people we didn't know, but they could see themselves using the app indefinitely. They found it to be a safe, comforting place and a great tool. And it can be used with couples, with both partners, with couples who only one partner's doing it and with individuals who want to learn. It is a subscription model. The app is in both the Google and Apple app stores at this time. It is functional at this time, even though we're going to be making improvements. It is $13.99 per user plus one per month, which is, you know, three lattes a month or something like that. It's way less than um, the $800 plus you'd be paying for couples therapy a month. So I'm um, going to go to the last slide. And so we are in a changing world that is relying much more heavily on technology while the population increases and resources are shrinking. Um, right now, um, people are really having trouble finding therapists. The COVID thing, for some reason, uh, I don't know what happened, but everyone I know who's practicing, their practice is full. And you also have to find someone who's right for you. So we're, so the world um, ha has a growing awareness of the importance of mental, mental and emotional health and the toll that relationship problems have on our lives. Um, I just want to mention one more thing because I'm sort of jumping around here. I didn't really talk about this, but what we're teaching is relational intelligence. Now, we talk a lot about IQ and EQ. Relational intelligence is a subset of EQ. People aren't really talking about it now, but that is what it is. How to have a relationship is a little different than there's some more specific things than um, EQ. All right, now um, that uh, so what my mission again is to help people have more access to the help they need to reduce human pain to increase human happiness and um, I'm looking forward to your questions if you have any and I really really want to thank all of you for your time and Jacqueline for all of her effort and her invitation. And I think I can probably stop the share now. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you. If, if I know we're a small group, but either virtually or in person, if we could give you, that was an excellent presentation. Oh, thank you. Very much. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're here to help. So what I'd love to know, um, first of all, I'd love to know what we can do to help you and like what your perfect customer could be. It, uh, I know it looks like you're allowing just anybody who needs it. So I would just assume if all, any of us know, if we or others want to know more about this, we could just tell them it's in the app store, but who are your perfect customers? So um, I thought a lot about this. Um, and because when I started this project, this mission, I was very aware of the problem with motivation. Um, and the the perfect the perfect couple is a couple who's self motivated. They are willing to say, "Let's spend you know twenty minutes uh, a couple times a week and do this and set some time time aside for talking." Um, when we originally tested the content before it was automated into the app, um, there were couples that wouldn't do it. It was they didn't want to, and then the couples that did do it reported really good changes in their really, I mean, massive changes in their relationship. So you really, you know, I mean, you either are desperate enough, you're going to do the work or you're just a motivated kind of person and you want to grow and you have a, want to have a better life. So that's because really everybody can benefit from relational help. I believe, I mean, it's not, it's no mystery that people struggle in their relationships. <laughs> yeah. Lisa, did you have a, thank you, Jennifer, Lisa. I did, Jennifer, thank you so much. And what occurred to me is Alaskans culturally are very, very independent. And I can see that the introduction to this um, app could be very helpful because there's a lot of people that are not gonna go to a therapist's office. Right. They find it too invasive, they find it embarrassing, but if they could start using the app, yeah. it could really be helpful because yeah. they have they have like more autonomy with it. Yes. Yes. And you're in charge of yourself. You aren't, you don't have to rely on, you let this third person into your relationship who you don't know right away. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely for people that are that fit that description, it would be a definitely they fit into the a good couple or person. Yeah. Thanks. Oops, you're muted, Jacqueline. <laughs> uh, are there other people that have some questions? Thank you. Uh, well, is, am I coming over here? Yeah, cool. Uh, so Jennifer, I mean, I, I'm a tech guy, so I, I end up, you know, thinking a lot about those sorts of issues as opposed to the ones that are, you know, sort of content specific in your case. But yeah, um, how how are you approaching issues around uh, privacy and data security and that kind of thing? It's, it seems like this is the kind of stuff that you know many people would not want disseminated, right? Right. Well. This that's a, a really good question and an interesting question. Um, when we were we were briefly a desktop and then we pivoted into an app immediately because the world had pretty much changed. And when we were a desktop, we de we had a lot of privacy things in place. Now we are an app and we're you know in the cloud uh, with AWS. Um, I actually don't fully have the answer. Uh, I know we've talked about privacy and, um, but would someone actually hack and want to look at, you know, a person's like, um, so the, the data, so when you sign into the app store, the app store has all that, the, the data of the person who now getting into the actual data of the app is a lot, I, I, it's a question I need to address and look at more deeply for sure. The reason I let go of it is because as I thought about, you know, does anyone care that I wrote down that I have trouble with conflict in my life and are they going to actually attach that to a name and do anything with it? It didn't feel to me, I started, let, started letting go of it. Also because we've got other apps out there. They're not constructed like this app is, they're, they're different, but they are for relationships and I don't see any of them talking about privacy. I looked at them all. So I let go of it for now. It is something I should talk to the developer about and get more information on. Uh, it just seemed, it became a non-issue when we flipped and so much wasn't in our control anymore because we're an app. Does that make sense? Yeah, oh, well, absolutely. No, it's, I mean, it's a very complicated domain to be to be working in and that's just one more thing to worry about, right? Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah I, I mean, certainly, you know, it seems to me that that's the kind of info that many people would be very interested in acquiring. Again, because I come yeah. from an IT background where getting yeah. leverage on people through phishing or whatever is the name of the game, right? I'll get I'll get the information from our developer and I'll put a little blurb somewhere on the website that explains privacy. I had it on the old website before we pivoted and we had, we were extreme privacy on that website, but uh, nobody said anything like, is it, pri I mean, people just used, you know, they went in and it, became like, I didn't see, I never got a conversation with anyone about, is my stuff going to be private? So I sort of, you know, relaxed. <laughs> well, and, and it's just, it's just a comment that please don't let it derail you because you're doing, but good. you're right. I should definitely, <laughs> I should definitely get a statement about how it's dealt with for sure. Yeah. So I want to be mindful. We, we, this has been an excellent presentation. We've gone super fast. Um, we have time. I can hang out. I know Jennifer is willing to stay on. But before we go, we have this one question. What can we do for you? Like here is Alaskans. You're based in, in Washington, so close. What can we do for you to help you move this idea forward? Well, let me tell you where I'm at, where we're at, and that might help you understand what you can do. So right now we are based on the usability testing. We are implementing some uh, fixes. I would say we found a couple bugs. We found uh, the areas that people kept saying, oh, we don't like that. We found the areas where they said, oh, we love that. And so we're gonna, we have a, a new developer that we are, uh, as of June 1st, we have a couple weeks of work to do just to make it better. Um, we are um, uh, working on fundraising because we, there's more things we would like to implement into the app. Like we'd like to put a community into the app so that people can actually, if they choose to, can create a group and support each other. So there's things that aren't implemented that we would like to implement and we need more funding to do that. Um, I think uh, I would say uh, we just get people to, we're gonna be doing more usability testing. We definitely can use more people to do that with us. And um, that will happen after we implement these couple of weeks of changes. 
Um, anybody who wants to could go into the app right now. It is a 30 day free trial. So you could certainly go in and play around. Um, you will, you, I don't, so we did a freemium version because Apple made us. I don't like the freemium version. It's not, um, it's not going to be effective the way the full premium version is, which is the, so I don't recommend that anybody advise people to do the freemium version. You can just do the premium and then you can uh, cancel in within 30 days and you won't be charged way better. You'll get to see everything. Whereas if you do the freemium, there's some bugs in the freemium I don't like. And, um, but I think just Mike, you know, Mike, Mike who's on there, Mike, can you unmute for a second? Mike's our co my co-founder and husband. Yeah. And um, what do you think we need right now in terms of support? I think, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I think that uh, just getting the word out to your network, Jacqueline, that there is a, there's opportunity for very little money to move your relationship from mediocre to wonderful so many so many people out there kind of are sucking it up and they're accepting that their relationship is mediocre yeah so i love so that's that good. Mike. yeah but but yeah you've got an excellent co-founder that's an awesome yeah. thing so so what i'm thinking is that we could help you if you move this forward and you're looking for people to beta test i mean yeah. one thing yeah. that we could User do is test. possibly yeah on you know reach out in our community and find those people so make those connections so that's one yeah. tangible thing that we can do okay we'll probably be doing that in about a month we i believe we have about a month of work to make the thing to correct and improve what we found and then once that happens we're going to do another round of testing for sure awesome. and something like this we found when we were doing uh user testing that a lot of people have a uh, um, a resistance to going through another learning curve for another piece of technology. We're kind of, these learning curves are getting more and more daunting. But we found that by walking a couple for 30 minutes through the app, okay, try this, now send a message to your partner. Once they got their hands dirty a little bit, now they're, gonna, they're thinking, oh, I'm going to share this with my friends. So this is something that really needs to be shared. I don't think very many people are just going to pick it up on their own and come close to figuring out all the potential. So we, we if we could figure out some way, I remember when, do you remember when Gmail started, when Google got everybody off of AOL? Well, they did in small little groups. And I got an email one day from my son inviting me to Gmail and they wouldn't let him send an invitation until he'd proven to Google that he was using it on a regular basis. And so the, the more we can figure out how to get people to share this as something wonderful. Yeah, and the other thing is any organizations that are working with people who need uh, more you know, mental, emotional, relational support, um, for them to know about this and, and, and you know, in some way uh, incorporated into how they help people would be really good, too. It'd be a great company benefit. I mean, have you ever seen a company pay any attention to the emotional happiness of their employees as far as their relationships go? I haven't right. yet. They've got statistics. If 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 you're unhappy at home, you're not going to be a great employee. You're yeah. going to be distracted. So, and yeah, these are great. Well, great advice, and I think that we have some of these connections, and certainly people are. Um, I think becoming more open to having these types of services for employee benefits. So yeah. we'll definitely do that. I'm mindful that it's now one thirty three. Um, it, last call for any wrap up questions. <laughs> well, I have a question for Jacqueline. Sure. I hope oh. I'm not offensive by this, but uh -oh. I hope you love the show Alaska Daily as much as Jennifer and I did this year. <laughs> oh, I, it. I sure did. I sure yeah. did. Thank yeah. you. Yes, that was great. Thank you so much. I don't know if we have any more questions. Doesn't look like it. Looks like we're All good. Right.
Well, then that's right. a good place to say thank you all for coming and thank you, Jennifer. I will certainly be in touch. I've got some ideas. Lisa, okay. Doug, Sheena, you guys are rock stars. Thank you so much for coming today. Yeah. All thank right. you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye now.